Hello everyone, Ryan Bailey here and you're very welcome to episode 31 of the Ball Talk podcast brought to you by our sponsor, Adapt Athletic Performance and Therapy. Their Instagram is on the screen right now. Make sure you go over and give them a follow. Today's podcast guest is St. Barnabas centre forward Sean Riley. Sean, of course, helped his club to win the New York Senior Football Championship last week, becoming the first All-American born team to do so. I hope you enjoy and let's get straight into the podcast. Sean Riley, all the way from Manhattan in New York. Sean, thanks a for joining me on the podcast. You're very welcome. Uh, pleasure to be on, Ryan. Thanks for having me. So, the majority of people that are watching this will know exactly why you're here. St. Barnabas, the club you play with, creating history last Sunday, becoming the first All-American born side to win the, the New York Championship. It's probably a mad thing for you, I suppose, thinking maybe four or five years ago, thinking that you're actually going to go and win a senior championship when all the clubs like Sligo and Donegal over there that are bringing in players every summer, that you got your opportunity this year to push on and win a senior championship. Yeah, it, it was great. It was, a, um, it was, it was definitely been in the making for a long time. Uh, we, were, we were close a couple of years, uh, maybe about three years ago now, maybe uh, two and a half years ago. We were close. Um, but yeah, we just always came up short. Maybe we didn't have the dogs to do it or the, the, the younger guys coming up, they weren't experienced enough and had the savviness to, to go out and finish games. Um, but I think what, uh, what won us for in the end is what, is what the, the work that we did four or five years ago, three years ago, is when we were getting hammered by teams that were better than us, um, we never gave up. Um, that, that's just something that's it. That's in a New York Gaelic player. That's something, especially within Barnabas is you, you just keep on going. You, you keep fighting for each other. You keep on playing just to play the game because, because, because we love it. Um, and we were 10 points down and, uh, that came through for us. I think definitely we, we came in at the water break, um, in the second half of the second half. And we just said, listen, let's just, let's just go after and no one dropped ahead. And um, as soon as that first point went over and soon after the goal, um, we, we just kind of felt that um, everything shift towards us, the momentum, the crowd. Um, and yeah, I, I think the, those, those four or five years, like you said, um, previous of getting battered a few games, um, really, really won it for us in the end because it was familiar territory. Mm. And, and I'll get, we'll get to the game uh, in a few minutes but we'll concentrate on the journey for now so going back to I suppose the start um, it's it's baffling to even think of a team of all American born lads uh, coming and winning the championship but were would you have all been around the same age is there is there a close knit of players there that would have played underage together as well oh uh, yeah definitely the, the it's it's funny after um after the match, we were talking to a few people, and and I, I was never really the old guy of the group, um, and and I, I definitely was this year. It was I'm probably there was one other boy that was older than me, um, but there's there's a there's a there's a group of about eighteen to twenty two year old guys on, on on that team there that is going to be creating noise for a long long time um, in Gaelic Park uh, and in senior champs, and hopefully in the New York team in the, in, in the future. Um, so yeah, the, the, the youth set up at Barnabas, um, is, is probably the best within New York, the New York minor board. Um, and, uh, and obviously winning it this Sunday is a great representation of that. So in the team, is it majority made up of lads whose mother or father would be from Ireland? I know your dad's from Charleston originally as well. So would it be, is, yeah. would there, is there any lads on the team that have just no connection to Ireland? Like maybe not the next generation, or is it everyone's their dad or man in, played at home? In, or te- in teams in the past, yes, we had a we had a few Puerto Rican boys on the team and Spanish guys on the team, um, Portuguese fellas. Right. Um, they 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 were on the team, but but this year uh, again, may, maybe that's the reason why we wanted uh, to have that bit more drive and 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 to know what it means uh, a little bit more. But uh, every, everybody on the team this year definitely. Um, uh, was second generation, first generation Irish with, with, with parents that, that maybe even played in Gaelic Park themselves. And so t- would you have been playing, as, as you were saying, there's a, there's a close knit group of players, probably, well, five, around five years like, between 18 and 23, say, that would have played a lot together and, and they're in the senior grade now. Would that team have uh, ever travelled to like the FAILA competitions or anything like that over in Ireland? Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're um, uh, obviously the fail is big time uh, within within New York. 
that's like the first major step for for people for for players putting on the New York jersey. And it's always a, a big competition to get on the team. So yeah, a lot of those guys would be in. But a, a new thing that they brought in, um, kind of what, when, when I was in college, was a, a university team. They um, around February, January, February, we go over and compete in the British uh, University Championships. So it, okay. it's another opportunity to for the boys to train together and compete together and and just grow uh, grow uh, a good squad for for hopefully like I like I mentioned before to to start playing for New York and, and competing in that stage. And it's very important, as, as you said as well, <laughs> the lads coming up from that under 13 grade at Fela, going over competing at university level as well. It's important for everyone to kind of stick with the sport and keep following it through to the adult level as well. But for yourself, you've played for Finn Harps as well over here, which not everyone will know about as well. So do you want to tell me a bit about your time over here playing Finn Harps and how that came about as well? Uh, yeah, so I... Um Obviously, being um, being Irish and, and always um, know what was going on in Ireland, especially in the soccer scene. Soccer is probably my first love. Um, it's it's my number one sport, um, and it's so it's it was always a dream of mine to go over and play. Um, and uh, when I was finishing up college, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, I called a few people, a few contacts back back in Ireland, and I was able to get a trial with Finn Harps. Um, and yeah, I signed for Finn Harps, played with them for a season, um, came back to New York, um, played Gaelic in, uh, played Gaelic. And then I went back over to Ireland to play for Institute in the, in the Northern Premiership, um, yeah. for, uh, for, for another year, uh, and then came back to America again. And then I actually signed professionally, uh, for a team in Rochester up in here, uh, over here as well. So I had, uh, it was it was always a dream of mine to be the, to be a professional soccer player and to I I didn't do it too long but um I did it long enough where I I, I can say I wore the hat uh, yeah. and fulfilled filled a little uh, childhood dream for myself which was, which was really cool and how was that that I suppose it was a bit of culture shock coming over to Donegal and playing you're going from New York to Donegal it's complete <laughs> complete different places yeah I I mean I I tell so uh, I I still tell stories to to my players that I coach over here um about about like training next to a sheep and stuff like that <laughs> um and having the walk to train and from the dressing room and and just like the, talking about the rain how uh, like how heavy and the different directions and the kids just sit there with with the, with their jaws to the floor um but uh, yeah the uh, the old sheep line over um, think of the name, but it's just it's just a little bit down the down the road from Finn Park, and we would go training and, and a sheep jump over the the rocks, the temporary rock wall that they have there, and he was he was running around training with us. So it was pretty funny. That's a, that's just a given thing over here. Like, just oh, that, exactly, just exactly, yeah. Like. But I'd say I, I would have been surprised if it didn't happen. But I'd say like when you're so you're coaching. Um, as you said, your coaching team's over there now in New York as well. You're probably, if any, were, if any of the players were to ask you advice to travel or anything like that, you'd probably be the first man to say it, to go. And if you want to go and play soccer in Ireland or play wherever you want, just go and do it. Oh, 100%. I was actually, funny you say that, I was talking to, to, to somebody after the match who's a goalkeeper and he's in college. Um, same type of thing with me. Parents are Irish and he wants to go over. And I said, don't even hesitate. You, you got to. And not just not just for the, the the soccer experience stuff like that, but but playing in the league of Ireland is is an experience all in itself um, because it's not everyone's not all full time and, and and you got to graft and you really learn a lot about yourself in that time. Yes, you have your your, your days of training. You have to look after your body and, and all that. And soccer is a priority, but you also have to go. Um, and, and earn a few few dollars somewhere else, um, yeah. and and it, it really grew me as a, a as a man for sure. So we'll go back. We've touched on the soccer. We'll go back now to, to Barnabas again. And I suppose looking at the game, I would have looked at the game on Sunday. Uh, I saw a New York Twitter page had shared the the link to the game on Facebook, and I watched the last fifteen minutes of normal time, and it, it looked like Sligo had had the thing wrapped up. About six points up with only five minutes to go. And looking at the game, you had the likes of Niall Murphy, uh, Johnny Glynn, your standout players for Sligo. I'd say you were, ma- you were probably, well, not massive underdogs, but you are probably big underdogs going into the game. Oh, easy, easy. Yeah, especially, especially after the replay. Uh, sorry, after the first game going into the replay, they brought in a few more boys um, to, to try to get them over the line. 
Um, because if, if we were, if we were honest with ourselves, if Barnabas were honest with ourselves, we probably left it. Um, we left, we, we left it on the first day. We, we, we should have won it. Um, and, and we didn't like giving that little bit of glimmer of hope, but, but yeah, as you said, we were still the underdogs. Um, I would love to see what Patty Power would have had us at, um, especially going into, uh, the, the last 15 minutes, 10 points down. But, um, but yeah, but we, we didn't care. Like, like, like I said, at the beginning of this, we were, we were always the underdogs. We're always just the, the, the Yanks playing Gaelic football and we're here just to wear a jersey and, and be proud to be playing in Gaelic Park. Um, but, uh, but we knew what we had. We, we, we were very confident in ourselves. We, we can see we were the fitter team. We were the more athletic team. Um, yes, we didn't have the, the, the big CVs of playing back home and winning all Ireland's and playing in Connick championships and stuff like that. But, but we had each other and, and we had all those years of, of, of losing to, to motivate us to get us across the line. And, and that was the big thing in our, I, I was never a big fan. I always yelled at the referee for these, for these water breaks because um, it's, it's part of my game. That's probably the best of my game. I'm, I'm pretty fit and I hate giving the, the other team a rest. Yeah. Um, and especially them because they love killing momentum because they're smart guys. They, they, they've been around the block and they would go down for injuries and stuff. They always kill the momentum. But I was really, really happy that water break came after they scored their, um, I think it was third goal or whatever it was to, to, to put them up by, by 10 points. Yeah. And just, just, just to gather ourselves, a few boys had the heads down. Um, and, and I'm, hey, I'm, I'm sure if you, if you asked a few guys in our team, they thought it was over, but we were just playing for a bit of pride. But um, like I said, after that uh, first two points went over and then we got the goal, um, we, we, we started feeling the momentum. We started feeling that, that, that we can go and do this thing. And then you go into extra time then and you hit two goals in the space of, I'd say, about 30, 40 seconds. Yeah, like I see so, yeah. It's such a turning point, like you're thinking, we're, we're getting back into this game. We're, right, we're, we're rightly in it now, sorry to say. And you're thinking, oh, we can go and win a championship here. And then you score six points, two goals, get six points in the space of 30 or 40 seconds. You're like, geez, we probably have this in the bag now. Definitely, yeah. Uh, like, even even at that, um, we, we were the fitter team and, and they knew it. That's, like, that's, um, that's why they did have to bring in those three or four extra guys. Um, and going into extra time, me, myself, I, I was quietly confident that that would go across line. Th- then they got the goal. I'm like, Oh, here we go again. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, th- that's the second half of extra time was kind of, um, was kind of nice as well. Cause we, we, I think we all knew we had it wrapped up. Um, so we were just there and, and the crowd was geeing us on. So it, it, it was really, really cool. Um, but like you said, that, that, that second goal, well, those two goals in 30 seconds definitely iced them. That, 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 that took the wind out of their sails 100%. And, and, and you've seen it in the second half. They, they, they were just kicking long ball, and they, they, they just didn't have the legs anymore. And um, obviously the, the thought of lifting the cup in, in about 12 minutes' time uh, was, gave our guys a little bit of extra boost, and, and obviously we, we crossed the line in the end. Definitely. And as you said, like you had the fitness, but... The fact that you know you're going to win the game, it gives you that bit more as well. You yeah, just know the yeah. other team is defeated. And you can even see, I think it was the last minute. I think it was yourself in the last minute of the game. You were kind of weaving your way back through your own back line with the ball, just holding on to it. And you could just see all the cycle as are kind of like, well, you know, yeah. this fella knew us. <laughs> it was, I, I, thought, I thought it was a good little send-off. Um, I, uh, because the game was slowing down, obviously, in the last minute. Um, and I was over in the corner. I looked up at the clock and I seen there was about 40 seconds left. So I was like, you know, it'd be cool if I grabbed onto this ball, just hold on to it and, and, and give it a, give it a big boot into the crowd. Yeah. It'd be a nice little send off. Cause it, there was a good, uh, good amount of people in the stands, socially distanced, obviously, and, and, and wearing masks. Yeah. Um, so, so, the, um, but, uh, but yeah, it was really, really cool. And the ball went up in the air and then everyone jumped up in the air with their hands up. So it was, it was really cool as the ball was traveling towards them. It was a nice little, uh, nice little um, memory for me to, to remember a little picture for me. And that, when that whistle went then, what was the, what was the feeling like? Cause I know even myself, like we, like we won, we won a championship there last week. Uh, ourselves in Sligo and that feeling that once the whistle goes you just want to bottle it like you want to bottle oh, yeah, it, yeah. Hold on to it the, like, but it... the the first person I wanted to go and see um so with, with Barnabas I, I I didn't play for Barnabas growing up I played for a team we we actually I'm I'm from way upstate not way upstate about about an hour north of, of Gaelic Park um and um obviously my dad being a, a big guy guy he uh he, he set up a, a team up here called St. Brendan's in, in the minor setup. 
I think we started at under 12s and it was just basically my soccer team. Um, and my dad turned it into a Gaelic team. Uh, right, and so yeah. I was, I was, I was always rivals with St. Barnabas. We all, we were always busting each other's balls growing up and we always had big, big rivalries, um, really, really hard games growing up. Um, but, uh, but with the Fela, the Fela, uh, brought us together and created a lot of, a lot of really good friendships. After that, we still played each other and, and they won, we won, um, they won, we won, got back and forth. But obviously up here, um, the, the steam runs out of it. The, we, we can barely get, get teams. Uh, I think, I think they maybe have one or two teams up here now, but, but anyways, Barnabas is obviously streets ahead of us in, in terms of enrollment and, and obviously coaching standards and all that. But anyways, um, Connor Hogan uh, and Shane Hogan, who's a, a big player from New York. Yeah. Uh, but Connor Hogan, especially, um, he's the guy that, that really got me back in the Gaelic because I kind of stopped. Um, I played a little bit in college for Donegal and then okay. I stopped. But he, re he really got me back in because he's the guy that, that from he's probably playing since he was under eight uh, and all the way up. He won intermediates, he won juniors, he won, and now, now he won seniors, but, but he's the guy that like, I never seen, I texted him after, I was like, Connor, I, I really did that one for you because I never seen somebody more passionate about something and care so much about a team than him. And he's the first person that I wanted to go, go and, uh, and give a big hug to after the game. Cause I just know how, how much it meant to him. Um, because he, it meant, I, I think I, no disrespect to any other players, but I think it really meant so much more. Uh, than him than anybody else so I run her uh, to, to see him out right away and that's 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 massive to hear as well because you know when, when people think about the American the, the sorry the uh, the New York championship uh, you think of fellas going over on J1s kind of I, I suppose like the lads that were playing with Sligo we saw Donegal Boston as well are a very good team for bringing over your Jim tried to bring over Jim McConley last year your Barry John Keynes fellas like that yep. but to have a team of American born lads come up and win a New York championship. It's, it's showing good signs for the New York team in years to come in the comic championship as well. Listen, I, I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope, I hope this, this opens a lot of people's eyes to, to, to the talent here, like the game being straight streamed back, back in Ireland. I, like what an advert for New York GAA. Yeah. Um, unbelievable. I, I think there was over a thousand people watching at one point. My, my uncles are saying, um, uh, and like I said, what an advert. I really hope that, that New York um, don't mess this one up because um, no, no disrespect to it, but I, I think they did in the past with, with the select of management and their, their style of bringing guys in, like you said, on J1s. It, should, it's, it doesn't do anything. They, they don't know what it is to play for New York. They, mm. they don't care enough. Um, and and it's, it, it's just... I think that's why some of those guys, the sad thing is, Ryan, I bet you there'll be more boys from that Sligo team starting for New York next May than on the Barnabas team. And it should be the opposite way. Um, it, the only way to, to get New York GA better is, is to play guys that, that want to wear the jersey, that been growing up, going to Gaelic Park every May, watching Mayo get hammered, watching Mayo and – uh, sorry, Mayo, uh, New York in close games and um, – and, and, Getting, getting hammered, but they want to play for it. And they don't want to play right now because they know they'll train their ass off for four months and a month uh, coming out uh, before the game, there are these boys coming out of the woodwork and they don't even know their names. Mm. There's boys playing on New York in May that don't even know each other's names. It's, yeah. it's, and, and it goes down to management. New York had an unbelievable opportunity to beat Leitrim and they should have beat Leitrim. I, 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 was, I, I was on the panel. Well, I wasn't on the panel. I was, I was training. And, and I got cut about a month and a half out and I'm sure I would have been good for one or two points in, in that Legion game. But again, it, it's a common theme throughout uh, the, the senior team in New York. It's the boys know that there's going to be boys coming off the street and flying in. And, and that's just the way it is over here. And that's, that's why they'll never, they'll never get to where they should. They're just running in place. They're running in place. And like I said, I hope, this win for, for, for Barnabas really opens the eyes to, to the management and whoever selects the, the, the coach for the team because uh, Barnabas is doing it right. They brought all those guys up, training and keeping them together throughout the university teams. There's, there's plenty of good guys out there that know New York, the New York football scene that can go and do it. 
And, and listen, we, we may go, I'm not sure who they're playing next year, but we might get hammered. But at least there will be New York-born players on the team and we'll do it our way. We'll lose our way. We'll lose fighting to the end. Hmm. And, then, and then when Leachin comes around again, no disrespect to Leachin, they're probably the best opportunity of, of, of New York winning a game. We'll go and beat them. Just like Barnabas lost four or five years in, in, in um, the senior championship getting hammered some games. Now look at us, right? Mm-hmm. Now we have a target on our head. That's fine, but we'll keep on going. That's just the way New York Gaelic players are. That's the way, we're, that's the way we were brought up. And um, I, I, like, I keep on saying, I like a broken record, but I really hope this is, this is an eye-opener for, for all the people um, in New York GA that, that we can do it. We can do it. Um, it'll take a little bit of time, yes, but put the right people there and put the people there that, that the boys on, on Barnabas, and listen, there's other, there's other New York-born players, there's other New York teams that have great players as well. Put the people in management that, that the boys want to play for, you know, mm. that the boys have no problem missing work on Tuesday and Thursday nights in the freezing cold in New York to go and train. And, and, and that's the difference right now. That's why New York will always be just a, a little trip for, for, for some of the bigger teams. And, and that's the reason why I think that the, the people in, in Ireland won't give New York a, a league schedule because it's a bit of a joke. You know, you say even we won the Leecher game, half the team wouldn't be able to go back because they're all in J1 visas. You know, it's, 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 just, the, it's just the way it is. I would love a visa, a visa list, um, if that makes sense, a visa list New York team. Yeah. in the near future and, and it's there there's plenty of irish guys out here we need those irish guys on new york to, to compete but there's guy there's irish guys that have been out here forever that really know what the new york gaelic scene is not these guys coming out two months pre- previous to the game they don't know what it, what it is They're, they get down 10 15 points and that's them they got their gear bag they got their nice new york track suit a couple instagram pics and that's them i completely agree with your point and it is it's, it's you're 100 percent spot on i'm going to twist it though a bit does that cause a divide that argument, because it is, and, I, and I'm saying it is a complete fair argument, but does it cause a divide in, in the in Europe panels or even in the Gaelic scene I, out there? I, I wouldn't say it causes a, a divide. Um, listen, like there's the boy, boys are, uh, it's the same, I'm sure, back, back home where boys are scrapping with each other when, when they play each other. But everyone at the end of the day, when they go down to McLean, they have a few beers and have a few laughs. There's no divide in terms of, oh, they're the New York boys and, and we're not. It's, it's just, it's just a, a frustration thing, I think. It's just mm. like knowing that they come out. Listen, they're great players, 100. percent Like I, I'm not saying they're not good players, but having having a game plan of getting the balls, getting the balls into the good guys, isn't going to win you anything. You, you need a team behind you, mm. and I, I think too many people are, are too many people say it, and and not enough people do anything about it. And and like I said before. I hope this this Barnabas winning it and all the kind of publicity we're getting back there um, does something. And, and we're getting here because everybody besides p- people rooting for Sligo are rooting for Barnabas, and and and, and rightly so, um, because I think what what over the two legs, over the two legs between Barnabas and Sligo is an, an exact represent, representation of what happens in in the New York senior team. Um, we, we tied the first game, really scrap, really scrap playing a, a, a team that's better than us on paper, 100%. But we scrapped, we got our draw, probably should have won it. But again, what does Sligo do? They go bring in three or four guys. Oh, let, let, let's get him in, let's get him in. These guys haven't trained all year with them. They, they, they're just showing up to play Gaelic. And, that, and that's what it's like with the New York team. And, and like I said, so Sligo bring those guys in. We're, we're sticking to our guns. We're going to play our way. We're going to play our guys. And, 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 and we're going to play our way. Um, and like I, I think, I think a New, a New York footballer brings a different edge. We have like this some sort of athleticism that that guys in Ireland don't have. Yes, they have the skillfulness and 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 kicking a ball since they're young, but but you can't teach some of the things that New York footballers have. Like the guys mm-hmm. playing basketball for for ten years of their life and having that little crossover dribble for for their for their bounce in a game, or or guys being able like baseball players having a bit more up top or or fast twitch muscles up tight. We just we we bring we bring an edge that that no one ever sees in May when in the Connick Championship and. It was tried once by by um, by Connie Malloy. He sprinkled in, I think, about five or six young young American kids. And listen, like I said, they got hammered, they lost, but at least 
these guys got the experience and, and Connie's vision was to go on and, and, and make them obviously given the experience and, and, and develop them. But that got shot, shot down real quick. Um, I, I, I hope it happens again. Like I, I probably won't be playing on the team, but, but, but I, I hope it, I, I hope it's there because the players are there, Ryan, the players are really, really there. And, and, and they're afraid to go on because they know what's, what's the point of me training my, my ass off for four months if I'm just going to get the number 26 jersey and not see the field, or like, like in my case, I'll, I'll get cut with a month ago. What's the point? There isn't, there isn't, there's, there's no, there's no pride in that. There's, there's nothing that you're just showing up for the Jersey then. And, and, and like I said, the nice gear bag and a tracksuit. but we, like, we're not interested in that. We want to win. We want to play for New York, but we want to, we want to wear our heart in our sleeve and, and, and give a good account of ourselves. And hopefully Hopefully in May that happens. Fingers crossed, touch wood. Yeah, hopefully it does. And even as you were saying there with bringing in players and stuff like that, and I know it's, like, it is a great opportunity all the same for, for someone maybe around 20, 21 years of age to come from Ireland and go over to play in America. Like it is, it's an opportunity in itself. But maybe if they were to set out, um, like a, I suppose, a transfer window sort of thing you could nearly do. You know, you, you say, yeah, uh, this, or, is, this or, is the uh, team you set. This is your squad for the year now. That's it. Yeah, definitely. If if they're if they're here before a certain time, but or or there has to be some sort of rules. Like if if you didn't play in the championship last year, the New York Senior Championship, you can't play for New York. You can't just have, keep on guys coming in and out. Yeah. Listen, I know I know that's the makeup of New York GAA, and that's what makes it really good. But if if you have a manager in place, very similar to to the Mayo manager, Sligo manager, Ross Common or whatever, they go and watch these guys play all year, right? Mm-hmm. And the and the New York manager doesn't watch half the team that's going to be starting for New York next year because they're all over in Ireland right now. Yeah. Surely, surely if the New York manager was there watching that final, the two finals and then, and then the games leading up to it, the intermediates, the juniors, all that, he can go and pick probably 25 top guys, whether they're, whether they're Irish, Jamaican, new uh, American, whatever, it doesn't matter, but he's gone and watched him. He's gone and seen him compete. Like, that's that's what putting together a, a squad is all about. Not saying, oh, I got so and so over in Ireland. He's looking to come over. You interested? Um, yeah, yeah. That sounds that sounds good. Bring him in. Like mm. you're not going to win anything like that. You're not going to create anything like that. And and that and that's that's the the I guess my biggest thing with the New York GA is that it's always it's always been like that since since I ever been on the scene. And 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 there needs to be change. And I keep on saying it. And then I hope everyone that listens to this. Um, understands what I, I hope the Barnabas winning it opens their eyes to it. Yeah, and as you said, the exposure the Barnabas Sligo game got uh, with the live stream on Facebook, I think that will turn a few heads as well because I, I can't think of a certain yeah. the lad that got the two goals, Tiernan. Yeah, yeah, Tier, Tiernan matters, yeah. Tiernan matters, right, yeah. Like I know watching Sligo, or sorry, watching New York play next summer, I'd be thinking if, this fella, if he's not playing, I'd be like, geez, where's this fella? He's after, he scored two exactly. goals in the senior exactly. final last year, you know. And it's that exposure, th- that exposure that the New York game is getting now, that's gonna start to raise more of these sort of questions. I think. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, you're right. You're 100 percent right. He might not even be uh, on the panel next year. I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm not sure of his, of his thinking, but I'm sure he, he, his thinking is kind of like mine. Why would I go down in February to go train and and, and not be on the team? He, he's he's well good enough to do it. You, you, you see him there. He's. Yeah, he, he's a he's a footballer. He's a Gaelic footballer. He, he he has it, as well as many other New York players, um, on on Barnabas, on Rangers, on Raymonds. Everybody w- within the New York minor uh, uh, the minor board setup. There's plenty of unbelievable American kids out there, and there's there's plenty of American kids that their number one sport is Gaelic, um, but um, they're they don't they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it, and 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 I I hope this is a change for it because. We can go and compete against Galway and Sligo and Leach. There's, there's no reason why we can't. Hmm. And, and, and a big thing that, oh, yeah, but we don't play any games. We just play um, challenge games and stuff like that. Like, why doesn't the GAA give, give New York um, a, a league schedule? Because they can't. Because, one, there's no squad together. It's not a year-round thing. Um, and, and some of the boys can't go back and forth because of their visa or whatever. Yeah. So make a, make a New York panel of about 30 kids 
And listen, we may go over and, and some teams may come over here and we'll get hammered, but at least we're gaining the experience. So further down the road, we'll be competing and we'll be something. Like London. London was yeah. in this Conic, champ, Conic, Conic final win. How long ago was that? But they, they play a league campaign, right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not, I'm not uh, pissing too many people off with, with, with what I'm saying. But, but I, think, I think it has to be said at, at some point. And, and what better time to say it than um, St. Barnabas um, made up of all New York players winning the senior championship in New York. It's perfect. Exactly. Spot on. And look at as as much as it is a great story and a fairy tale sort of a thing, it's a statement of intent. And I think you've made the point of the last half an hour saying Barnabas winning isn't just a isn't just one of these fairy tale sort of things. It's a statement of intent that New York born, American born players are here to play Gaelic football for New York. Hundred percent, right? Hundred percent well said. Yep, definitely. definitely. Sean, thanks a million for coming on to the podcast. I really enjoyed you know, the last half an hour. I hope you did as well. Um, oh, I did, I did, I did. But I gotta give a few shout outs before I go, yeah, otherwise, yeah. I get the head, the head eaten off me. I, I, gotta, I gotta say hello to everybody, um, all my family over there uh, in Charleston, especially Granny Riley. Hope you get to listen to this. Uh, I love you, always thinking of you. And then another shout out to um, the Dunshocklin um, women's team, they're in the intermediate uh, Linster semi final. I actually uh, did a training session with them about a year and a half ago. So all the hard work paid off, girls. We're nearly there. Uh, I'll come. I'll come fly over for the final if you make it. All right. Best of luck in the in the semi final. And Granny, again, love you. Talk to you soon. Brilliant, Sean Riley. Thank you very much. Ryan, thanks, man. Take care.